What do sea foam and tree bark have in common? Well, more than you might think. If you watch Quick Tip 213 called No More Artificial Bark, then you already know how to do this. This tip is about sea foam. We've got several questions about uh, falling water, are they the waves on the ocean, and foam, and all this sort of stuff. Well, it all has the same answer. It's just a, another way of looking at it. Now, look, look at these two photographs. One of these was shot, uh, obviously, in very, very overcast sky, so we don't see very much color. And, of course, the other one is sort of typical of what we might see uh, in, in, as the ocean is, uh, the foam of the ocean is moving towards the beach. All right, and let's do a little experiment here. In your mind, turn this, rotate this vertical, and just look at this area right here. Doesn't that look very much like the bark on the tree? The pattern. And if you look at this portion, same thing. So the, the patterns that nature gives us are all so similar. They just have a few little different twists on them. So I want to show you how to think about doing all kinds of water, foam on water. Not just, have a, not just give you a formula. Now this is the way you do it because that doesn't do you any good at all. It just shows you one way to go. But if I show you how to think about it and a couple of techniques about maybe how to make it work, then you've got the freedom to explore it and to do all kinds of interpretations. So look at this. <clears throat> I have this, uh, this simple little uh, outline here. Two things. One, visual. Learn how to look for these things. And the other is technical. What do you do after you look at these things? What do you do to make what you see happen on your canvas? So what are we looking for uh, when we're doing the visual part? Learn how to forget what it is. It's not C. There's not foam on C. Not now. Not while you're trying to look at it visually. But what you see is pattern. And what causes that pattern? Now let's look at this. Let's take the end of my brush here. What do you see in the, in the way of pattern? Let's look at this one. What we see is we see things flowing. Our pieces flowing. There are act actually textures. Textures flowing and moving in a direction that actually um, creates a pattern. The pattern has variations in it, but we have an overall pattern or a movement that goes this way and this way and sometimes maybe shortens a little bit, sometimes gets a little bit longer. So that's the textural pattern. What else do you see? Learn when you're looking at things like this, learn to look for layers. Sometimes you'll see two layers, sometimes you'll see three. What I mean by layers, what's underneath that pattern? If you squint your eyes and you see underneath that pattern, you actually see a gradation, very similar to the gradation that I showed you in the, in the Quick Tip on Tree Bar. Then we go to the technical part. In the technical part, we can divide it into two parts, just as we did with the tree trunk. We can go, do the gradation first and the pattern second. So what do we need to know in order to do that? That also is part of the technical end of it. You need to know how to do a gradation. And the best way you can learn how to do a gradation is to begin by developing at least six values on your palette. Break it down into values first. If you don't already know how to do a gradation, this is the best way to do it. So I'm not going to deal with color in this quick tip. I'm simply going to deal with the technical part and how to see the value part. You can add the color part to it later. So if you take, I've got two colors on the palette here. I've already got one of them gradated. Uh, and these are burnt umber and ivory black. And one of those two, because burnt umber is warm, ivory black is cool. And if you're working those two together, um, you can then, you, you don't have to worry about color, but you can use them to, to create gradations and patterns and still have something that has a little bit more life to it than just using one color. I didn't have to do that. You don't need both those colors. But I thought maybe let's just add that little bit to it. Alright, so now how do you do this part? This is the first step. This is technical. If you can't do this, you may, be having, you may have trouble doing the next steps or being able to create a gradation itself. 
All right, so I've got Aubrey Black here. I'm just going to very quickly here show you if you can create six values that go from the darkest dark of Aubrey Black to the lightest light, then with those six values you can do a gradation that's in shadow, gradation that's in light, or gradation that's in between. All right, so we'll put just a tiny bit of the Aubrey Black into the, the lightest light, and then we can come to the center here and create a middle value right here. We can create a middle value that's about, my palette's a middle value, so it sort of sits in between. Just that gradually add a, a little black into the white at a time and sort of look at them comparatively. Now you see that is a little bit dark. If you squint and you see it's a little bit, it leans a little bit more towards the black here than it does towards the white. Now this is preliminary, this is to get you going. So we'd add a little bit more white back in to that and get that adjustment first. Now if you did the charts that we did, can't remember the numbers of those but you can look them up. Um, this, the charts give you this kind of control too. This, if you can get this kind of control with creating your values, that will go a long way towards enabling you to get gradations and also to help you create light and shadow in your paintings. Okay, back to this. All right, now we can go to the dark side of this. I said six, I think we'll settle for five. Uh, go back to the dark, gradually pull the darker color, uh, a darker color and value, into the white until you create a value that sits visually sits in between this and this. Now you can see that's too dark. I need to add just a little bit more white back to that. Just showing you how to do this. Alright, so that I re it reaches a point in value where it doesn't lean towards one or the other but kind of sits in between visually. It's not any, it, it's, it's the same distance in, in value from this value as it is from that value. And then we can do the same thing over here where we gradually just add a little bit of dark into that. We want a value here that sits in between the lightest value and the middle value. This is value control and value control is the one thing that I see as a teacher I see missing from uh, most, most people's work when they're having trouble uh, with getting their work to to harmonize or to actually have life. All kinds of things like that. Alright, moving back to this. Now, so we're looking, we're, looking, we're looking for that pattern. What does that pattern have in it? I said consider it as layers. The layer behind this pattern has a gradation, the layer onto which this um, the sea foam exists, has a gradation that goes from this value to about this value right here. So it's not the darkest dark to the lightest light. Let's see if we can find it and I'll show you how you can create that. Also show you a little bit of a technical thing here that you can use with a brush to do that. Um, when you're layering one color on top of the other, the color underneath uh, should not be as thickly painted as the color that goes on top of it. You know, that's a technical thing. So <clears throat> we need to know how to look, then we need to know what technique to use. All right, so if we're doing that, uh, we can come, we can see this is shadow. This is actually created a sh the shadow, more or less you could say it's the shadow end of, of this area of the, of the sea, or the, where the foam is rolling up uh, towards, towards the sand here. So we can start with that value, and let's see what value do we have. I think we might have, I'll just do this with the black now. I think we might have something about like this. Let's see. No, it needs to be just a little bit darker. So then you can see you can move from this value into it and get it just a little bit darker. That's more of a, of a we might call it a shallow, shallow, shallow value. All right, a good way to do a paint, uh, a layer of paint underneath is to use a, um, I use a filbert for this because it works very well, uh, but use a bristle brush and use a scrubbing motion. And so I would just simply do like this, and I want to have just enough paint there to cover that surface so that I, I get the surface covered, but there's not a lot of paint on top of the surface. So I could take my finger and pull it like that, 
and you see I would have not have paint scooting all over the place. Now to get the gradation, I go to the other side of this volume. Let me wipe off this brush first so we can control the gradation. We want the next value underneath that to be the value we're seeing right down here because we're going from kind of shadow to not shadow. You can see how this re is related to the bark demonstration we did. I'm using a little bit different language, a little bit different approach, but the principle is very much the same. In fact, all these principles in art this is the same if you haven't noticed. Now, um, let's see. Did I get that? I wanted to get that comparison first of all. So if I squint, all right, so I'm in that area right here. Let's get that just a little bit lighter. So um, there it is. That is, that's pretty much it. So we can just, now you can see this now is lighter than that. That's what we're seeing underneath all that foam. Now we need to get a gradation. We can get the gradation by going into this value in between and put it right here. See, I'm scrubbing that in now. Now, that's what I want you to notice. I'm scrubbing that into the canvas in order to make the next step possible. Now we'll just, just scrub them together using kind of a, a hatching motion. It goes this way on one side and this way on another side where we're pulling each layer of, those, of that paint, pulling one layer of paint into the other till we get it smooth and go back up here, pull off the brush here, and I go back up here and I do the same. And so we'll I need to add just a little bit more paint in between here. There we go. Now, or you can use a circular motion such as I'm using here. So what we're needing there, you see we have a very subtle gradation that goes from a darker value to a lighter value very similar to what we're seeing happening there. All right, what's step two? Step two is observation of pattern. Now, it might be helpful uh, for, it might be helpful, first of all, if you simply locate the pattern that you're seeing here. And one way to do that, um, if, if you're out looking at the ocean itself, uh, you would need to locate that pattern you need to uh, locate the general pattern of movement because the ocean is going to keep moving. But if you snap a photograph like this, and if you print it out, one thing that you might do is simply take a pen and find the pattern of movement. All right, so we got that pattern that moves this way, and then we have another pattern that's moving that way. We have another pattern up here that's moving that way. All right, so we notice that, and then what do we notice in between? In the shadow areas of this pattern, the values are very close. Where the light is hitting the values, the, the light is much lighter and the values around it are a little bit darker. So we've already got the dark value there. It might work better on creating those patterns if you use a softer brush. So let's just give you, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm going to show you how to think about this. So if we're doing this pattern right here, we need a value that is just a little bit lighter than what we're seeing here. So I would go into a middle value perhaps there. And I would compare. Need that just a tiny bit lighter. So you don't go start quite over dark. And not even start quite over what we have here. But pay attention to the value of the light that's creating that pattern. And then very gradually very gradually interpret that light. Now let's see if that's a little bit lighter. So a good technique to use uh, would be to use the, the uh, tip of the brush. Now you see if I make a bare mark right there with the tip of the brush, that's barely lighter. Now let's look at the pattern. The pattern is the movement that goes like that. So I'd make my brush move in the same way. Now we would, well, I'll repeat that a couple of times. As I said, we're going to show you just enough to make it possible for you to do just like I usually do in these quick tips, there's another pattern of movement that does that. What we see, another pattern of movement at the bottom there that's in that same close value range that does something like this. Then if we get a little bit closer, we can see a little bit more value contrast. So we'd pick up a little bit more of the white in that same, then we locate it. Where we see that value is contrast. I see a little bit of value contrast right here. And what's it doing? It's doing something like that. A little bit more value contrast where we see it in that area right there. What's it doing? It's doing more of something like that. 
And see, we're beginning to get a pattern now that shows us the same pattern of movement that we're seeing here. And I'll do uh, just a couple more little strokes of uh, pattern here. What we see happening a little bit lighter as it comes in. I struck it in and it gets a little bit more blended. And then you, and some of those then after you have your patterns created, where you're observing the pattern you see here, you look the value of contrast that's creating that pattern, you'll see little bits of light here and there that are the lightest lights. And you just pick up a little bit of that lightest light and find where you see it and you just stroke it there and that's all you need to do. Something like that. So this gives you the idea of how you can approach using the visual first of all, looking for the pattern, looking for the texture layers, what lays on top of what, and then looking for the value gradation that's underneath that textured layer. Then go to your technical part. If you don't know the technical part, you're not going to be able to do this satisfactory. So if you, look, if you do the technical part first, work on gradation. Work on creating gradation on the palette. Then work on creating a gradation on the surface. Then the pattern. And within that pattern, observe the value differences. Where the value is very close in the pattern, the movement you need to make the brush in order to create the pattern. I might also say whether you need to work on the tip of the brush or where you need to push it a little bit. And that too, if there is a movement that is uh, starting out as a taper, let me just do a little something here. If you have a movement that's starting out sharp and it gets then it gets wider, you can push it a little bit harder like that. And then you uh, uh, continue to move your brush in the direction you see that movement going. Then you've got it. This kind of thing requires practice. It's not going to happen instantly as some of these YouTube um, instructors would lead you to believe. But there's a payoff. The payoff is once you get accustomed to this, once you develop the technical skills, and once you develop the observational skills, then you should be able to paint any surface, any foam that you see on any kind of water. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. And thanks for watching.